So, Peter, I, I want to ask you about something uh, a bit off to the side right now, because, you know, as much as, you know, we've been looking at COVID, obsessed with COVID for well over two years now, right? Now, it's almost like now we're, we're talking about a completely different disease, monkeypox, right? Oh, it's not an airborne virus, or at least the, 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 so, so, so the science books tell me. Um, and I, I've just heard a lot of different stuff about it. And there seems to be this, you know, increase in cases. There seems to be, you know, a kind of a media narrative emerging around this. And I wanted to, like, I just wanted to see how, how are you viewing this whole thing, this whole monkeypox question? The disease may be fear of the next contagion. And what we outline in our book, it, there was an, actually an entire response to pandemics and contagious illnesses being developed over the last decade. In fact, there was planning for this, informational planning. And when the news broke about monkeypox, an illness of which there are cases every single year. Uh, in fact, there hasn't been a, a case that hasn't, you know, hasn't been a year where we've been devoid of cases. There are, are dozens, if not hundreds of cases, and now we've amassed a thousands of cases since it was first discovered. But why is it in the news cycle? Why are uh, pictures, uh, some pictures that are on the internet right now, Jan, are black and white? They look like they're decades old. So a brief summary, uh, monkeypox is in the orthopox virus family. It uh, was initially described in monkeys in the Congo basin, 1958, first human case. So it jumped from, uh, from uh, primates to humans, 1970, US outbreak in 2003, when pet prairie dogs were mi mixed with giant pouch uh, rats from the Congo Basin, they actually spread it to one another. Some, uh, some people got it in the United States. That's 2003, no deaths. It, it manifests as a pustular rash. It's in the same family as smallpox and camelpox and cowpox, uh, but monkeypox is not very communicable. It can spread from saliva and actually the liquid in the pustules. And what we had come to learn is that uh, over the past five years, there was planning. So uh, for an example, uh, there was a development of a vaccine and the vaccine is held by a company called Genios. It's a live attenuated vaccine. Monkeypox is of interest because whatever is done for smallpox works for monkeypox. And the thought is, if there was bioterrorism related to smallpox, which is still held uh, in some labs worldwide, if it ever got into uh, to nefarious hands, that we would need something to manage smallpox bioterrorism. So enter monkeypox, there are parallels. So there's a Genios live attenuated vaccine. There is a drug called Ticoviramat or Tpox. That's a, a, a VP37 inhibitor. It's a, it's a cell surface uh, in, inhibitor, works well. We live in an era of censorship and disinformation, and it can be really hard to know what's true and what's false in this information climate. To get honest information and insights you can trust, join us on Epoch TV. You can sign up for your 14-day free trial at ept.ms slash free trial Jan. That's ept.ms slash free trial J-A-N. There is a well-developed uh, thought process about what we would do with monkeypox. There was a paper by Beer, another one by Simpson in 2019, summarizing decades of literature on monkeypox and what we would do if monkeypox was part of a bioterrorism attack. And then in March of 2021, there was a simulation tabletop exercise uh, by the Nuclear Threat Initiative, a think tank in Washington, and a Munich biosecurity group where they uh, had scenario planned a monkeypox bioterrorism event that uh, in this case, the monkeypox would be completely resistant to the Genios vaccine. It would lead to over 200 million deaths. Okay, again, it's just a theoretical tabletop planning exercise, but the release date for the bioterrorism attack was gonna be May 15th of 2022, just seven days before the World Economic Forum meeting in Davos and the World Health Organization meeting in Switzerland regarding a global treaty for pandemic management. So the timing of this was so suspicious that uh, whoever the stakeholders are involved uh, could have had the idea of just using the reported cases of monkeypox, of which occurs worldwide, to juice the system with fear. 
So what in response to this was the U.S. government immediately uh, said that they had pre-purchased, they had actually purchased now 13 million doses of the Genios vaccine in preparation for a monkeypox major outbreak in the United States. We had in April of uh, April 22nd of 2022, a report from the CDC of a case in Dallas. There was a man who uh, flew from Africa to Dallas. He first went to Atlanta. He saw people there. He came to Dallas. He had lots of exposure, developed the classic monkeypox, ultimately was hospitalized in Dallas, I think largely for contagion control. They treated him with Ticoviramac or TPAX. He did fine. But the report comes out in the C CDC MMWR, you know, describing this case and all of his case contacts, he didn't spread it to a single person. So it's not very transmissible. But the important point is on the author line there, there are over three dozen authors and they're termed the CDC monkeypox response team. So we have had planning, a lot of planning for monkeypox. And this almost seems like it's event 201, oh, you know, now for the next pandemic illness, the next business opportunity, if you will, for CEPI. I mean, that's that's fascinating. And of course, you know, you've been doing a lot of work sort of mapping out this the biopharmaceutical complex, as you describe it. Um, John, of course, I'm speaking to here. Um, that That's fascinating. So uh, the only thing that I have trouble with is this is this, this isn't a terribly communicable disease, right? Like it's it's only done by physical, essentially by physical contact, as I understand it, unless there's some sort of crazy mutation that puts it into the air that would make it highly communicable, right? And how this plays out, how is this going to be convincing to the population, assuming there's a kind of injection of scare here? I mean, I think the guys who made the vaccine are, are going to make out really well. And I think what this biopharmaceutical complexes discovered is there are all of these pathogens out there that could become an emergent disease pandemic. If you present it, if you take a few isolated cases and you say, oh dear, you know, this is going to be this terrifying thing that, that goes nuclear, then it triggers all of this pandemic response, including the generation, the generation of huge amounts of money. Mm -hmm. And if you're positioned well within the complex, you, you know in advance you're going to be the recipient. Now the one really salient point in all of this is what these guys really like are vaccines. I mean, public health is actually a very complex thing. I mean, it's sanitation, it's the ecology of, of, of the country, it's the overall health condition of the population, the age of the population. But if you're hanging out with guys in the biopharmaceutical complex, you, you wouldn't know that there are these variables. It's just vaccinate, and that's it.